Welcome to Deadly Dames and this is going to be my complete DVD collection part 5. It's actually been a little while since i um done a DVD collection. I've been meaning to get through it. It's just, um, I know I have so many of them and uh, I've been upgrading a lot of them as well. So um, I have moved a few of my DVDs about. So if there's any of these that were in any of the other collection ones, so 1 to 4, I do apologise. As I said, I've been sort of uh, upgrading and moving things about. Let's get started. So um, I've got Hills of Eyes Part 2. Oh, sorry, losing focus here. That's better. Um, I was going to upgrade this to Blu-ray, but do you know something? The Hills of Eyes Part 2 is not a really good film, so I'm quite happy just keeping it on DVD. Um, Season of the Witch, uh, Georgie Romero. Uh, Romero? I don't know what I just said there. Uh, this is one of these films that never really got a decent Blu-ray release, so that's why I've hung on to the DVD. Um, along with this one, Monkey Shines. Again, never really got a decent Blu-ray release here in the UK, so again, just hung on to the DVD. This is an excellent film. House of Long Shadows. So funny, and um, obviously it stars a lot of the, the greats. Christopher Lee, Vincent Price and Peter Cushion. Three greats in one movie, you can't go wrong. A couple of remakes here, so um, I spit in your grave remake. I actually don't think it's a bad remake. It's not as shocking as the original, but it's not bad. And then I have a spit in your grave part two, which I've actually never watched. So I don't know, I should maybe get around to watching it. Um, a very underrated Wes Craven movie, The Serpent and the Rainbow. I really do enjoy this movie. I think it's a very, as I said, underrated Wes Craven film. I'm actually not a big Bill Pullman fan. I don't know, there's just something about him that kind of irritates me. But I do enjoy him in this film. And then Sinister. This is one of these movies that I thought, I went into it thinking it's just going to be a jump scare movie. I thought it was going to be crap. The only thing that made me want to see it is Ethan Hawke. I do actually really enjoy Ethan Hawke as an actor. And um, there's a couple of scenes in this that are proper, like, you're not going to forget them. So it took me by surprise. It's a movie that I was probably a bit too harsh on. And I did really enjoy it. The sequel, however, I didn't enjoy it at all. I thought the sequel was a lot of crap. So, just my opinion, but I didn't enjoy the sequel. It relied too much on just jump scares and not actually the storyline. The original April Fool's Day. I've actually never seen the remake, but I love the original. I grew up watching this film. And yeah, it's not really a horror film as such because it's all the April Fools, but it's just enjoyable. It's just silly and fun, and I just really like it. Um, Scar. This movie is it's a low budget film, um, and it stars. How do I say her name? Angela Bettis. That's it. But I actually really like Angela Bettis. But this movie's got quite a horrible theme in it, where. Like, the two girls are held captive and basically they, they get to choose what happens to the other one and so it doesn't happen to them. So it's a horrible idea, but it is, for such a low-budget film, really quite good. Um, so I would recommend watching Scar. Then a movie which I badly need to upgrade, which is American Psycho. I keep meaning to get a steelbook of it because I quite like the steelbook and it's not that expensive, but it just uh, keeps falling off my list of ones to pick up, like something else will come on and I'll get that first. But American Psycho's a classic, I think most horror fans have seen it. Then I've got The Omen, which is a, a classic. Omen 2. <laughs> Omen 3. And Omen 4, I think you could see where that was going. The sequels aren't as good as the original, but they're still worth a watch. Then I've got my Region 1 release of Monster Squad. Y'all know how I feel about Monster Squad. I love it. Love Monster Squad for passion. Um, I actually bought this before I found the Region 2 German release of Monster Squad on Blu-ray. Is that a German or Spanish? Can't remember, but it's, it's not it's Spanish. Sorry, it's Spanish. So my Spanish release of Monster Squad, um, which does actually play on my Region 2 A or B Blu-ray player. But I had this before and I've hung on to it because it is a 20th anniversary edition. So there's a lot, as you can see, of special features on there. So, And I love Monster Squad. I wish somebody would give it a decent release over here, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. And then this is my German release of... Sorry, my 
camera's just not focusing at all. Um, a German release of Nightbreed, so the Cabal. And I got, again, I got this one because it did play Region 2. And I got it before I got the, again, the Spanish release of the Blu-ray. And I also have the Screen Factory Nightbreed, but only, I, can, I don't have a multi-region Blu-ray player, so I can only play the, the DVD version of that. Um, I just love this movie, so I'll hang on to as many formats of it as I possibly can. And then Slashers, you can get this movie really cheap now. It's really, it is a really cheap made movie, um, I don't, I'm not going to lie to you, but it's very funny and very entertaining. So basically it's about these people that are taken and put in, I think it's by choice, into a game where if they survive they'll win, I guess like a million pounds or something like that. Um, and they have to survive against these, the slashers, these guys that are in there trying to kill them. The effects are actually pretty good considering it's so cheap, but... Um, I just really enjoyed the slashers. I find it an easy going horror film to watch. And The Strangers. I remember really enjoying this when I first seen it. It's actually been an extremely long time since I've seen it. So it's probably drew another watch. But um, I still enjoy The Strangers. This is a movie that did actually disturb me. And that's uh, Eden Lake. And I think it's because like, it's a British made movie. And... The bad guys who are teenagers in it are very realistic to some of the folk you see kicking about in Glasgow or other places where you see these gangs of kids going about. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to do what they do in this film, but they're realistic people. And that's what made it more scary is to think that there's uh, that there are people out there that could do what happens in this film. But it's a really, really good movie. Um, an excellent Hitchcock film, Rebecca, starts off as if it's going to be a ghost story, goes a whole other direction, but yeah, I love Rebecca, it's a very, very long movie though, I think it's like over two hours long, but you don't really even notice that you're watching it that long because it's so good, so if you are a Hitchcock fan or a suspense fan, then this is definitely a movie that you want to see. Then we have Insidious 3, which is not the best sequel, but it goes with um, Insidious 1 and 2. Insidious 1 took me by surprise. I did actually quite enjoy it. And that scene where he sees the creature behind his mum is still, to this day, I think it's just because they put the loud music in, but it still kind of creeps me out. And then we've got Dead End, which is actually a really good film. Um... It's all about, you know, their... Oops, another dropped it. It's all about their, you know, they're their dead, but they don't realise they're dead storyline that so many movies did all at the same time. But um, I like Lin Shay, and I just thought this movie was very clever. It's way better than Seeker. Oh, was it, what was it called? Seeker? Reeker, that's it. Um, which is a very similar themed movie. This one's better. I need to stop trying to drop it. There. And then... I think this is a... Spanish film. It's a French film. Oh, completely wrong. Them. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen it. Actually, I can't remember much about it, but I've obviously hung on to it because I really enjoyed it. I need to watch this again. And then I've got Species Two and Species One. So obviously, Species One's the better of the two, but. I do actually enjoy the sequel. Uh, I wouldn't watch three or four. They are utter rubbish. But the first one's definitely still worth watching. And it's a massive collector's edition of its way. I've still hung on to it. And then The Gift. Excellent Sam Raimi movie. I think um, it's definitely up there with one of his best films of all time. Along with Evil Dead and probably Drag Me to Hell there in Spider-Man. They're all really good films. Um, but I love The Gift and it still to this day gives me chills with some of these scenes. Kate Blanchett's excellent in it. And then this is one I think you might have seen already in another review because I have moved things about and it's the remake of The Maniac. Um, I do actually prefer this to the original one because I think this movie flows better. And I think Elijah Wood was a perfect choice for this character because if you met him in the street, I don't think you'd actually think of him as a killer at all. But some of the choices that, that he's making, like this and then obviously playing in um, Sin City, he, he's excellent casting choices for him. We Frodo to a serial killer. And then we've got Candyman, Farewell to the Flesh, 
Candyman Day of the Dead and of course Candyman which again I need to upgrade to Blurry the first Candyman movie still scares me to this day I think Tony Todd does a fantastic job of playing him because he plays them with such um, emotion for a killer he does he plays them with a lot of emotion um, not straight out there oh wow wow I'm crying emotion but just uh, you can see the pain in him and you can hear the pain in him when he talks but I absolutely love the first Candyman the other two not so much they're just fun slasher films like what happens to all great slasher films a sequel comes along that just doesn't surpass how good the original was but the Candyman is still a fantastic movie and then uh, this is a fantastic movie from um, David Cronenberg's son so it's Brandon Cronenberg I'd love to see if, if he does it anything else he, he hasn't released anything since this but I would definitely recommend this movie again I think I might have had this on a previous video but as I said I have moved some things about so apologies if I, if I have but uh, this is definitely an underrated film that I would recommend to anybody um, don't want to say too much because I'll give it away but it's very on topic with the way that the world is right now and when you watch it you'll see what, see what I mean I couldn't find a blurry of it but if I do I'm definitely upgrading it one of Johnny Depp's best films which is Secret Window I just really enjoyed this film again it's been a long time since I've seen it so it's due another watch Wax Mask um, it says Dario Gentle on it but he just produced it but it's just a silly silly um, sort of Italian horror film but I just enjoy it Spiral now this is actually a Adam Green movie but it also I think he co-directed it yeah with Joel David Moore who was um, a guy that was an actor in the Hatchet really good movie about a, a, a guy losing his mind it's just a really good film Brain Damage by the same guy that did Frankenhooker and Basket Case that's all I need to say about this film to make you want to watch it. If you like Brain Damage, uh, sorry, if you like Brain Damage, no, this is this film. If you like Basket Case and Frankenhooker, you will love Brain Damage. I know what you did last summer. That's obviously a classic 90s horror film. It came along at the same time as Scream. I think most people have seen it. It hasn't aged as well as Scream, but it's still an enjoyable film. The Psycho Collection, it's got all of them on this. Can you see it very well because of the red, but there we are. Um, I do actually have Psycho, multiple editions of Psycho, but I just kept this because it's a complete collection. Obviously the sequels are not as good as the original, but it's still a good movie. Clown, this is a, a produced by Eli Roth movie. I went into this thinking it wasn't going to be great, but it totally blew me away. It was a movie not afraid to kill kids. A lot of movies shy away from that, but... This one just dove in head first. Really good taking, like, um, it's about a guy that finds this old outfit and puts it on to wear to his kid's birthday because the clown let them down and they can't get the suit off and he slowly but surely becomes this demon. It's a really, really clever and good film. I enjoyed it so much. And I actually have no idea why this movie is um, from horror films, but it is, and it's Big Lebowski, so excellent film, but I don't really know why it's sitting in my horror films. Um, the Conjuring. I really enjoyed The Conjuring um, up to an extent. I, I liked it until we seen her. I, don't, I wasn't a big fan of the sequel, but it was still okay. Creep. Really creepy movie. I think that's all I need to say. I think if you haven't seen The Creep, you should definitely give it a go because it is a creepy film. The remake of Toolbox Murders by Toby Hooper. I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people don't like it, um, but I did actually quite enjoy it. Again, it's got... Um, Angela Bettis in it and I quite like her so I don't know if maybe that's a part of why I enjoyed that film but I did um, Village of the Damned John Carpenter's, it's not the best remake Thing pre-sequel Escape from LA these are all movies you don't need to say much about Ghosts of Mars Mum and Dad which is a horrible disturbing British film The Ugly I really enjoy The Ugly and then I know I mentioned this one on the other another update, but it's uh, Andy Warhol's Blood for Dracula and Flesh for Frankenstein. So, yeah, that's everything for um, my complete DVD collection part five. Hopefully you like it, and if you do, leave me some comments and uh, please like and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Thank you. Take care.